Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another challenging problem from challenge your understanding magnetics this is a pathfinder magnetics a challenge your understanding problem 2 so without much, much ado let's straight away look at the problem here's the problem for I'll read it out for you consider a okay let me choose another one. consider a long current carrying cylindrical conductor of radius capital R so this is a conductor of radius capital R okay current density capital J inside the conductor is uniform over the cross section so the sum current density maybe you can think uh, it's going parallel to the axis current is going like this so here uh, um, current is going okay uh, uniform over its cross section deduce uh, suitable uh, expression for the force of interaction per unit length between the two halves that are obtained by dividing the conductor by a plane containing the axis of the conductor so this is a complete cylinder and uh, this is a separating plane i have separated it just for aesthetics showing what exactly uh, we want so we want the force of attraction between two uh, semi cylinders okay Sem semi cylindrical portions of the same current carry carrying wire okay so if you want you can give it a try i'll get into my analysis straight away so let's see so uh, there are two methods i'm going to present two methods the first method is what uh, what's uh, the cute method i would call it a uh, cute and creative method and the other method is uh, more mainstream and more conventional that's the magnetic pressure method so first of all we'll uh, do it in a cute uh, manner a cute and creative manner okay so let's uh, see what's this uh, cute method okay I'll try to relate it using the concept of center of mass. You might be wondering what center of mass doing in magnetics, but uh, uh, hold tight and you'll see what center of mass doing here. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, so let's consider uh, a strip of uh, area DA. Okay, so this uh, current is going along axis and this DA area also going. Uh, the, you can protrude it in along the current carrying uh, wire. Okay. So uh, what we'll do, we'll try to find out the force, magnetic force on this uh, small area and then we'll try to uh, see what uh, expression we get and then we'll see how to relate it with center of mass. Okay, consider a strip, current strip of cross sectional area dA in the upper semi-cylinder. So what's the force on this strip? So if the length is L, so then force is IL cross B and uh, uh, so what you can write for I, I is nothing but J vector times dA. Okay and L comes as it is and then cross B okay and what is magnetic field at this portion uh, that this uh, uh, this is a standard theory that you do using Ampere's law you find the magnetic field inside the solid cylinder carrying uniform current density and it happens to be linearly proportional to R so I am going to use that result directly that you get from uh, Ampere's law uh, this is also used in one of the Erodo problems so this is magnetic field inside the uh, solid uh, cylinder carrying uniform current density axially okay so you just put then uh, b substitute b over here so what do you get you get uh, l mu naught uh, okay this mu naught comes here so l mu naught da by 2 this by, by 2 comes here and this da comes here and then it becomes j cross j cross r this j cross r here and here this j and then what you can do you can use vector triple product so uh, you can use the back cap formula for vector tri triple product that is a cross b cross c is b times a dot c minus c times a dot b so that's what you do here and realize that j vector is perpendicular to the r vector r vector is in the cross section of the cylinder whereas j vector is along the axis of the cylinder so this goes to zero and if you simplify and j dot j is of course j square so you get the small amount of force as mu naught l j square by 2 and times r vector da already uh, your uh, uh, mind will be rushing forward the moment you see r da this looks like r dm okay uh, while calculating center of mass you very often come across r dm so this is a similar expression okay so now recall that the term r da is similar to the term r dm that we encounter while finding the centroid or center of mass of a semicircular lamina so what i can do uh, in, for integrating RDA, I divide it by the area of the semicircle and multiply it by the semicircle. So, what does this become? So, integral RDA upon A becomes centroid of the uh, semicircle. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So, because uh, instead of this, suppose it was a uniform lamina having area uh, mass dm and here it would be total m, then it will become the centroid. But mass would be proportional to area, right? If it's a uniform density lamina, you can imagine like that. Okay. So, mass per unit area sigma sigma will cancel off and 
this will reduce to the coordinate of the center of mass of the upper uh, cross section the, say that semi circular okay and you divided by area so you have to multiply it by area where a area is pi r square by 2 okay now recall that centroid of a semicircular lamina is at 4 r by 3 pi so you can just substitute 4 r by 3 pi for this so what do you get mu naught j square l by 2 4 r by 3 pi into pi r square by 2 and n cap is the uh, direction uh, the unit vector along the uh, direction to the centroid okay so this is the force you simplify it and you divide by length because you are you want force per unit length and uh, if you simplify this is the result that you get and you are happy this matches with the answer given at the back so this was the cute method of doing it the creative method using the concept similar to center of mass okay now we'll do uh, it in the more conventional way that's the magnetic pressure method and magnetic pressure method has its own beauty it's a very versatile method it can be used for creating some more problems in fact the previous method also can be extended to some other problems suppose you want a force on a quarter cylinder or something like that okay so maybe i'll try to uh, make uh, a new problem some original problem using these concepts in future now let's look at the magnetic pressure method so we call it magnetic pressure so why do we call it pressure at all uh, so when you are introduced to the idea of pressure uh, you are introduced to the idea of pressure in fluid mechanics right and there you think of pressure as the force due to the collision of particles at any surface area right so uh, for ease of understanding you can imagine that that this cylinder along which the current is flowing is let's say made up of some liquid and uh, because current is going parallel to the cylinder axis so current current is trying to squeeze in the liquid why because like currents you know that attract each other so because of the magnetic because of the magnetic force the cylinder will try to squeeze itself of course if it's a rigid cylinder it won't be able to squeeze but then that squeezing force will be balanced by the hydrostatic repulsive force right and if it's in case of a solid cylinder it will be in the normal reaction or kind of stresses that will develop that will balance the uh, the squeezing force due to the magnetic so uh, in equilibrium the two forces uh, will balance each other right so let's try to evaluate this magnetic pressure or rather hydrostatic pressure that's balancing the magnetic force okay so let's say at uh, we consider an element of uh, at a distance r from the center of thickness this dimension being dr the inward dimension being dl and this dimension being d theta okay so uh, what we'll do we'll try to find out or we'll try to equate the forces on this so imagine the cylinder to be made up of some fluid then magnetic force on any element must be balanced by the hydrostatic pressure created in the fluid in response to the magnetic forces the magnitude of magnetic forces on any element is same as the magnitude of hydrostatic pressure forces right because of equilibrium now magnetic force on each element will be what so df will be ideal cross b so i am going to use the same formula for b that is mu naught j cross r by 2 and ideal uh, similar to what i did in the method one so uh, you just put the values r d theta dr and all those things you put so this is your magnetic force okay uh, so uh, and again j cross j cross r we have already simplified using vector triple product and if you do that kind of simplification this is what you get for the magnetic force okay uh, according to the equation four that we derived in method one and now what about the hydrostatic force you see here the pressure is p plus dp here the pressure is p so you just multiply this by the area that is dl into r d theta right so that's the area so uh, the pressure will be in inward pressure will be dp multiplied by the uh, area so dp into r d theta into dl and minus r cap because it's the inward force right so hydrostatic force then that just becomes minus dp times r d theta dl okay r times r vector becomes r uh, r times r cap becomes r vector okay now for equilibrium the, the the sum of magnetic force and the hydrostatic force must be uh, zero that means uh, magnetic force must be negative of the hydrostatic force so this is the expression for hydrostatic force and uh, this is the expression for magnetic force and you equate the mods of the two or you can just even take the sign values uh, according to this equation if you do that you cancel off d theta dl uh, d theta is there dl you cancel off and if you simplify you get dp is min minus mu naught j square by 2 r dr and uh, then uh, using this differential equation you can find pressure as a function of r from the center so you can find the hydrostatic pressure as a function of r and you know that at the outer surface there's nothing pushing the cylinder right outside there's vacuum and there's no hydrostatic pressure from the outside right so outside pressure is zero at 
R equal to capital R pressure is zero and R equal to small r pressure is P. And that gives you hydrostatic pressure as a function of R as this expression, right? So you can see at R equal to capital R it is zero. So once I have hydrostatic pressure, I can uh, integrate the hydrostatic pressure over the uh, partitioning plane. Okay. So now force between the two semi-cylinder can be found by integrating this pressure on the over the separating plane. Why? Because the attraction force is being balanced by the hydrostatic uh, pressure forces. Okay. So uh, the magnetic force indirectly is uh, same as the uh, hydrostatic uh, force. Okay. So DF will be what? So this length is L and let us say you consider a DR uh, strip. So the area becomes LDR. So pressure into LDR is the force. You integrate this, substitute the value of pressure, mu naught j square by 4 capital R square small r square and integrate from minus r to capital R. You see, you integrate from here to here to get or you can just take double if you want to change the limit from 0 to capital R by symmetry. So and then uh, this comes out, uh, uh, this expression, if you integrate this, divide by L because you want force per unit length. So I am calling that as small f and this is what you get for force per unit length. and. Uh, we are happy that our answer matches with the given answer. Okay, so that was my analysis. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and uh, you were able to understand the concepts that I wanted to present nicely. Thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, please do share this video as much as possible with your friends and please do hit the like button and most importantly if you are not already subscribed to my channel you know what to do. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel. Please press that button. Okay, because that's what keeps me motivated to do uh, new videos for uh, uh, the students frequently. And thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.